Here is how you can grow your YouTube channel using ChatGPT. So ChatGPT can do a lot and most people don't realize just how much it can do. It can improve your titles, brainstorm new video ideas, critique your thumbnails, analyze your retention charts, more on that later, improve your scripts, help with research, get more brand deals, reply to comments faster, generate custom video footage, you know, that's pretty crazy, and number 10, create endless thumbnail variations. Now, not all of these are, you know, optimal, but we'll dive into that in more detail. And the crazy thing is that 95% of content creators still aren't using any AI tools. And even the 5% that do have no clue what they're doing. And usually, you know, it's only like they know of ChatGPT or maybe Midjourney, but that's usually where it ends. So it might feel like you're late to this whole AI revolution, but in fact, we are all still very, very early. And also AI might feel complicated, especially if you're new, but honestly, anybody can learn how to use it. Just take it one step at a time, you know, don't try to do everything at once. Just, you know, if you haven't used anything, just start with ChatGPT and go from there. So bad news, in the future, AI will replace some content creators, especially those that make, you know, low effort content that's easily replicatable and easily automated. So, you know, like if you don't, if you don't add significant value to your content, and if someone can replicate it with zero budget and very limited skills, then AI can do it. AI will be able to do it too in, you know, six to 12 months easily. But the first wave of creators that will be replaced will not be replaced by AI. They'll be replaced by other people who have learned how to use AI. So just please don't be one of those people who, you know, sticks their head in this head sticks their head in the sand and hopes that this goes away. This isn't going away, it's only becoming better, so learn how to use it, otherwise you might be one of those that will get replaced. But there is also good news. AI can't replace your personality or your unique connection with the audience. So be unique, don't copy everybody else, be yourself, you know. Recently we've seen the rise of people like Sam Sulek, who prioritize personality and authenticity above everything else. So. I think that's going to be the next wave of YouTube. Like, you know, we've seen the vlog era, we've seen the spectacle era. Now it's going to be, you know, the authentic era where everybody either becomes a unique person, an actual individual. And, you know, like nobody wants to see these copycats, like who are just looking at what Mr. Beast does and replicates it. Like it's boring, it's uninteresting and it's easily replicatable. Also, another good news is that social media platforms will always need people who have interesting and unique ideas, who can come up with good storylines. So, you know, AI will not replace everybody. Like if we're talking like, yes, 50 years into the future when we have super intelligence, then sure, we can speculate what happens then. But I'm talking about, you know, practical the next two, three, four years. That's not going to happen because the people running the companies, they do not understand content, actually. You can, al you can always see it, you know, when... Like YouTube has their own like creator support channels. The thumbnails are horrible. The video ideas are trash. So YouTube, the people working at YouTube are nowhere near as good as the top creators at creating content. So social media platforms will always need you if you are good at storytelling. Oops. So another good news is that a select few people will embrace AI, learn how to use it and grow their channels faster than ever before. So that is the potential of AI, if you actually utilize it. And my mission with this video and with other videos is to show you how to be one of those select few creators. Part one, how not to use ChatGPT. So don't make it right 100% of your scripts. This is a great way to get no views, honestly. ChatGPT does not understand your writing style. And even if you give it, uh, you know, some samples, it still cannot replicate it nearly as well as you can. And let's be honest, most people at this point, you know, it's been a year since ChatGPT was released. Most people can spot your know, text that's just copy pasted from ChatGPT, especially if you got some email that's, you can clearly see that it's, it's been written by an AI. And when that happens, you like immediately lose all respect for that person, or at least like you can see through it and you know, it's bad. And also, YouTube is actually cracking down on AI generated content. So do not, you know, use ChatGPT to write 100% of your scripts. Now you can use it to improve your scripts and I'll show you how to do that later, but you know, don't make it write the entire script. And 
especially if you're in a small niche, this is very bad because ChatGPT doesn't have perfect knowledge. You know, if you're in a big niche, like, you know, fitness, it has a lot of knowledge about fitness. But like, if you do like, you know, gardening in the um, Russian tundra, like, it doesn't know enough about that, you know. So the smaller the niche, the less you can rely on it. Also, don't rely on it on for video ideas, you know. Well, <clears throat> it, it, it can be helpful with brainstorming, especially, you know, if you already ha have some format that you know works, it's very bad at generating video ideas from nothing. So if you just say, give me 10 video ideas, you know, about tech, it's going to give you shit video ideas. Just, I'm, I'm being honest with you. So you're much better off, you know, trying to model success or model um, what already worked in the past than just blindly following what ChatGPT tells you. The, the reason why, you, like the main reason why you shouldn't rely on it with video ideas is this. Choosing what video to make is a decision that requires like so much context, like a hundred different data points. Now you might even not be aware of all the data points, but like you have them in your brain if it's your channel, right? So like what worked before, what the audience likes, what you feel like creating, what's working in the niche. And like there are so many different, you know, context points and data points that go towards making this decision and ChatGPT doesn't have any of them. So that's why you shouldn't rely on it with the most important decision for a YouTube channel, which is choosing what idea you make, what video idea you actually make. So also don't, let, you know, another mistake is letting it browse the web. Like the browsing feature in ChatGPT is insanely slow, like insanely slow. So either use Perplexity, which is another AI tool that's growing massively, or just use Google. I mean, it's, it's honestly faster just searching it yourself than using the browse feature on ChatGPT. And also often the information that it gives you uh, is unreliable, biased, or flat out wrong. Because it, you know you, it, when you're browsing Google, you can clearly see what links you're clicking and you can check uh, if the site is trusted. But with the browsing plugin, you have no control over which sites uh, it visits and you know which information it pays you. And then it also, uh, uses its own pre-programmed bias from the training weights to interpret that information. So, you know, if it's something that goes against the OpenAI guidelines, it might slightly twist it and you will not get exact um, info from the website. So it's much better to just have it summarize text, you know, just going to a website. If it's too long, boom, copy, paste it to ChatGPT and have it summarize it. Then, have, then giving it the website link and waiting 60 seconds Sometimes it actually takes that long. Next step is to subscribe. So if you're getting any value from the video, please subscribe. Part two, ne how to never struggle with titles again. So a lot of people struggle with uh, title variations and I'm gonna show you how to solve this problem once and for all using ChatGPT. So ChatGPT can be great at title variations actually. As you can see, uh, these are some examples of titles it wrote after I did some prompting, but it also usually sucks when you don't do any prompting or when you don't know how to prime it. But the main difference, the main difference, you know, so what's the difference between this and this? Well, the main difference is examples. You have to give it examples because if you don't give it examples, it uses what it knows about YouTube from its training data, which is, you know, very, very, av like it's average, right? So like the knowledge is like the average YouTube video, but you want to give it the best titles. So even just five good titles in the prompt could make a huge difference in the result. So you might say, okay, which examples to use? Well, you can think of some titles yourself. So maybe, you know, think of 30 different title variations and then pick the best five to 10 and give that, include that in the prompt. So ChatGPT knows what a great title looks like. Or you can just, you know, you give it the titles of your most successful videos because those are already proven uh, to work because they have the most views. So titles that are similar to that will likely get more views than uh, any random title. Or if you, you know, let's say you're a smaller channel and you don't have any big videos, well, you can just research your niche, uh, check what the biggest channel are, channels are doing, sort by most popular and see what titles are working and use those as examples. Now, ideally they have to be relevant to the video idea, um, you know, you, like, <laughs> If you're making a video about cats, then yeah, like different titles about pets are good. But like if you give it titles about 
cooking, that's like completely off. So, you know, make sure the examples are relevant to the video you're making. Also, experiment with title formats from other niches. So you don't have to stick to your niche, but you know, just you can give it title formats, but you have to clarify that those are just, it should only copy the writing style, not the entire topic, you know. So like, let's say you bo you see some cool title that you think is clever. Well, you can copy that format in your own niche, in your own uh, field, but just, you know, make sure to adjust it, obviously. So here is what it looks like with no examples. So this is the exact prompt I use. And I picked a random video idea, which is reviewing interesting tech products. And these are the seven titles it gave me. Now, as you can see, like, they are super long. Uh, I don't know, personally, I wouldn't click any of these, just like not clickable at all. They use like long words instead of just, you know, short and easy to understand stuff. Yeah, pr pretty mediocre. And here is what happens when you give it five good examples. So yeah, I borrowed these titles from Mr. Who's the Boss because, you know, that's one of the biggest tech channels in the world. So I get, I, the, the, as you can see, the prompt is exactly the same. I added this one sentence. Every title you write has to be inspired by one of the following titles. Use the same writing style and formatting. And then I give it five examples. Same video idea and look at the difference. These are infinitely better titles just by giving it some examples. Now, the one thing I noticed is that <laughs> I asked for seven and it gave me five, but that's, I think, because it got confused with the five um, examples. So, you know, just a small tip, try to uh, make the number the same. So. If I wanted seven, I probably should have added two more examples. That way uh, it didn't get confused. But either way, like still, the, the difference is night and day. Like these are horrible titles and these are pretty solid. I mean, obviously not Mr. Who's the Boss level, but it's trying. It's much better. Part three, the easiest way to improve AVD. So this, you know, <clears throat> this is what a good retention chart should look like. Now, if your chart doesn't look like this, don't worry because this one is from Mr. Beast, so it's expected your charts don't look like this. The easiest way to improve your AVD is to simplify the reading level. Like the average person reads at like seventh to eighth grade level, and on YouTube it's even lower because the audience is younger. So it's like five grade reading level. So if you have like long sentences, complicated words, and like multiple commas, it's just like stop. Simplify it, keep it clear keep it easy to understand and just by doing that not even changing anything else about the video just by making your scripts and your intros simpler and easier to understand you will instantly boost your avd so some what chat prompts can you use to achieve this well here are three examples rewrite the following script so that it's at a grade six reading level while keeping the same writing style or a different prompt List out 10 most complex or confusing phrases from the script below and suggest simpler alternatives. Now, obviously, these would be at the top of your prompt and below you would paste your video script. Or if you don't do scripts, you can just take a transcript of one of your past videos and analyze it to see just how many confusing and complex parts you have, because I can guarantee you it's more than you realize. Okay, so the last prompt is analyze the script I attached below and provide me with 15 specific suggestions on how I could make it easier to read. All of these would improve your script. And again, before, as I said, ChatGPT is terrible at writing the entire script, but it can be great at analyzing it and improving and, you know, suggesting small improvements. And then you can decide with your own brain which of them you actually want to implement. And if you do this, you'll be surprised how many uh, how many things you didn't spot in your script that could be simplified. Part four, how to analyze retention charts like a pro with the help of ChatGPT. Step one, <laughs> go to studio.youtube.com. I included this because you'd be surprised how many YouTubers aren't using the YouTube studio, which is crazy, but hey. Step two, on the left, you know, click on content. Step three, choose the video you want to analyze and click on this analytics icon. So the second icon right here, I chose this one of my videos. Step four, scroll down and you will see a retention chart like this. Step five, this little bu button that nobody clicks, see more, click that. Step six, uh, you, will, you will get the advanced analytics view. Now go to the 
top right corner. I have to do it in reverse. <laughs> but basically, look for this button in the top right, you know, the down, like download icon. And when you click that, you will see this uh, option menu with two options. Just click on Google Sheets. Then wait like two seconds and you will get this. A new tab will open up. Um, you know, it will be named something like this with your video title. And you will see the detailed breakdown of the audience retention in one, like, uh, split into 100 different segments for the video. So this is like infinitely more detailed than you can see with your eyes. So download this file and you do that by clicking file in Google Sheets and, you know, download. And you can choose either Excel or CSV, both will work. Step eight, open ChatGPT and drag in the file. So as you can see, I dragged the file in and then I used this prompt. So here is a detailed spreadsheet showing the retention chart of a YouTube video. Now, by the way, you don't have to use this exact prompt. You can experiment with different prompts. And this definitely isn't the most optimized one. It's just like showing you what you need to tell it. Like, you know, you can, uh, you can improve it and try different prompts. But this is just to give you an idea. Column A breaks down the video into 100 different parts. Column B shows the percentage of viewers watching at that part. Your task is to identify the 10 biggest drop-offs in the video and list them out. So then what will happen, ChatGPT will use code interpreter to uh, analyze the video using code. And it's, you know, using libraries, I think in, in this case it was Pandas, to look for the 10 uh, biggest differences between the numbers next to each other. And you, the output should look something like this. So on the left, this is what it looked like, um, you know, this is what it looked like the first time. Now, as you can see, a lot of these are the intro. So this is the intro, you know, 13 probably isn't the intro. So like, there's always a drop in the intro. Like if you go back and even look at the Mr. Beast chart, you know, even he has a drop in the intro. So that's like, obviously if, you know, this is a drop of like, let's say 34% in the first, you know, minute or whatever. So that's pretty good actually. If it's a drop, but your charts will have like a drop of 50% or maybe 60% in the first minute, which is bad. So definitely you should pay attention to the intro, but it's always going to say the intro. So what you can actually do is what I did on the right is I just said excluding the intro. So you can do, you know, skip the first eight segments or skip the first 10 segments. So I did eight here. So it starts at 9% and this is much more valuable. So you can see the parts of the video that are not the intro that have big drop-offs. So 30% in, there is a drop-off. So then you just go into the, you know, you, you have to actually do something with this data. So you look at the retention chart, you look at the video, uh, like if you want the exact timestamp, you can even use ChatGPT for this, you know, just give it the video length and tell it to calculate what is 13% of that video. So, you know, it will, turn the video, like I'd say 12 minutes, 50 seconds, it will turn that into seconds and then calculate what is 13% and then give you the minute and second. And you can really analyze that part. Why is there a 3.45% drop off, which is quite big or 88%. What happened there? That's towards the end. Like, did you maybe signal that the video is about to end? You don't know, but that's you're, like, you have to actually something do. You have to do something with this data, you know, don't just like do it, do it to like check it off. And like, yeah, I analyzed the video. No, you have to go and look for parts and like, why did people click off here? Is it maybe something I said earlier? Is it uh, some sound effect? Maybe the visuals weren't, you know, interesting enough, or maybe I was repeating myself. Like you have to actually think. And if you do this for every video, you will improve faster than you can imagine. And the last part is to subscribe. So if you've gotten any value from this video, please subscribe. It really helps out a lot. And it takes just two seconds.